Now moving on to a third question for this same scenario. It's going to be the opposite of question two. So what happens is the company decides to convert to the 40% debt capital structure. However, you as a shareholder prefer the all equity capital structure. How can you use homemade leverage to replicate the unlevered payoffs? So what happens now is the company converts to 40% debt capital structure. So the cash flows that we are going to receive as shareholders owning 150 shares of the company is $775. We calculated that in part one. And notice currently how these cash flows are greater than these ones, which is great. But maybe us as shareholders, well, you don't want to take that extra risk of the EBIT potentially going down and then having our losses magnified. So we want to mitigate that risk. We want to minimize risk. So what we want to do is we want to decrease leverage. So we want to bring the cash flows back to this figure here. We want to decrease our exposure to leverage. Well, we can't tell the company to decrease their debt. We don't have that kind of power. So we're going to have to do it on our personal side using homemade leverage. And if you remember at the beginning of the lecture, I said to decrease leverage, what we have to do is we have to take our leverage stock that we currently own. We have to sell some of the stock and then we have to take those proceeds, take that cash and then personally lend it. And that process will decrease leverage and give us unlevered cash flows. The question is how much stock do we sell? And the answer to that question of how much stock we sell is the same debt percentage the levered company has. And in this case, in this scenario, we know that it is 40%. So we were, fortunate, uh, we were fortunate enough to get that percentage. Sometimes you'll have to calculate it. So you can do that by taking the debt over the firm value or over the assets. So the debt of the levered firm we know was 151,200 and the assets were 378,000. And when you divide those, you end up getting 0.4, 40%. So what we have to do is we have to sell 40% of our stock. So currently, what do we have? What's our personal equity? Well, as we figured out in question two, we own 150 shares <clears throat> and they are worth $42. So in total, we have $6,300 invested in the company. Now this share price here is of the levered firm and the share price is the same as the unlevered firm. The share price doesn't change when we're dealing with no taxes and we're going to discuss that in the next video and we've shown that before as well. The share price is always consistent. But now these 150 shares, it's of the levered firm. Because remember, the company converted its capital structure. So we have $6,300 invested in the levered company. Well, now what we have to do is we have to sell 40% of our holdings. So we have to sell 40% of our holdings. Well, we own 150 shares. What's 40% of 150? Well, that is 60. So that means we have to sell 60 shares. So what's the proceeds we would get for that? So we would take 60. The share price is still 42. So we would now receive $2,520 uh, $2, worth of proceeds. So how many shares do we have left now? So we now own 
90 shares of the levered company. Because we sold off 60 shares, we sold off 40% of our original holdings of 150 shares. So 150 minus 60, we now have 90 shares remaining. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that cash that we got, $2,520, and we are going to lend it. So we're going to lend $2,520 at that same interest rate of 8%. Now, another thing I want to mention about all of this is that let's say that you're not given the number of shares, you're not given the share price, but you're given the amount that you have invested in the levered company. Well, to find out how much you would lend, or how much of your holdings you are selling, you could just take that total dollar amount and multiply it by 40%, multiply it by 0 0.4, and you would get this dollar amount of 2,520. So I took a bit of a longer route. So I showed that 40% of our holdings is 60 shares, and then 60 times 42, I got this dollar amount. But you can go straight to that dollar amount by just taking that 6,300 and multiplying it by 0 0.4. However, I just wanted to show the whole process so you better understand what is happening. So taking all of that I wrote before and then maybe putting it in a timeline, perhaps people will understand it or see it better this way. So originally we owned 150 shares of the levered firm. And what we did was we sold 40% uh, of those holdings because we're trying to match or we're trying to sell the same debt percentage that the levered company has and they have 40% debt. So we sold 40%, meaning we sold 60 shares, meaning we received $2,520. Then we took that $2,520, we lent it out personally at 8% and now we own only 90 shares. It went from 150, sold 60, and now we have 90. So now as we did in question two, what I wanna do is take our new situation where we own 90 shares of the lever company and we lent $2,520, and I wanna calculate what the cash flows are gonna be of all of this. So the 90 shares of the levered company if you remember from part one, we calculated that the earnings per share of the levered firm was what? It was $5.17. So each share is earning that much, $5.17. Well, if we own 90 shares, what we can do is we could take 90, multiply it by the earnings per share of $5.17, and the cash flows that we would get for that would be $465.30. Or we could just, let's just round it. We've been rounding so much anyway. So $465. That's the cash flows that we are receiving from owning 90 shares of the levered company. And we also lent $2,520. And we lent it at 8%. 8% is the standard interest rate for everyone, for corporations and for individuals, whether you are borrowing or lending. So we're going to take that 2520 and multiply it by 0 0.08. And when you multiply that, you end up getting $202 worth of interest that you'll be receiving. And this is rounded, I think it was like 201.6. So I just rounded it up to $202. So what are our total cash flows going to be then? Well, we're receiving $465 worth of earnings, and we assume all the earnings are paid out as dividends. So $465 worth of dividends for owning 90 shares of the levered company. And then we're also receiving $202 worth of interest for money that we lent out. If you remember, when we were borrowing the money, we had to pay interest, so that was a negative cash flow. Well, in this 
uh, in this case, we are lending it out. So that's going to be a positive cash flow. So if we add these up, what we end up getting is $667. And notice that that is pretty much the same as the cash flows that we had as shareholders when the firm was unlevered. The reason why there's a bit of a difference is from rounding. These should be exactly the same. All right, so notice in this case how the company converted its debt or its capital structure to 40% debt. However, we as shareholders didn't like that. We wanted to have that same all equity capital structure. So we can't tell the company to go back to its all equity capital structure. So we did it with homemade leverage on our personal side by selling 40% of our holdings lending out those proceeds and then those cash flows get replicated and we have that same cash flow amount as if the company was unlevered. So after all that, after all those examples, after all that work, let's give a summary for homemade leverage. So if you're trying to increase leverage, what you wanna do is you wanna borrow personally and buy more unlevered stock. And how much do you personally borrow? Well, you borrow to match the your personal debt to equity ratio to the levered company debt to equity ratio. And you do that cross multiplication like we did. And then the second scenario, if you wanna go the opposite way, if you wanna decrease leverage, what you have to do is you have to sell a portion of your levered stock and personally lend the proceeds. And the amount, that you sell, the percentage you sell, is the same percentage that the levered company has in debt. So you sell percentage of holdings that matches the debt percentage of the levered company. And the way to get that percentage usually will be given, but if it's not, it's just the debt of that levered company over the assets of it. And that's it for homemade leverage. So whenever you run into questions dealing with it, you can refer to the examples that we went through. And you may have to watch it a couple of times, it's pretty complex. And when you're doing questions on this, make sure that you are doing questions that deal with both scenarios. In my opinion, probably the scenario where you have to increase leverage is tougher because you gotta do like that cross multiplication and stuff. But uh, overall, it's not too bad. And the more questions you do, the less you'll have to refer to these videos, the process will just be unconscious at that point.